patch 1.021's finally here. Yes, this is supposed to be the patch that fixes everything. Supposedly, well, it will put patch will fix some things. Let's go over, let's have a see what they bring in in patch 1.021. Hello, yes, smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos. Me, Mr. Sneaking, an official Call of Dragons content creator, and we're here. Patch 1.021 has finally dropped into my inbox and we've been able to go over it as you can see and um, it says it's going to drop on the 13th of December so that's in approximately five days time from here so you can imagine another update where they normally tell you the exact time a little bit closer to there so just imagine that second um, mail to come through but we are doing the winter wonderland finally we've got our first proper holiday event we've clearly got one and it's for uh, christmas as you can imagine so we're going to be able to do a seven day series event with a limited edition city theme avatar and nameplates which is really cool winter decorations so you can decorate your sacred forest and receives from the elven queen dongrad banquet put together a feast for heroes we've got the treasure hunt back again then bounty hunt as well and great height amid countless trials surpass your boundaries and ascend the glory to become a living legend so we've got these really cool different events all put into these holiday events let's see when they come can't wait for that everyone's looking forward to the christmas themed skins i hope it looks amazing and it has some really cool like animated themes for being the very first one i really want them to put some love and effort into it so can't wait to see that first ever holiday event new year's another year is almost over and a new one is about to uh, begin ring in a new year with a new exciting event so on new year's day clearly there's gonna be everything must go which you know is the event in the goblin market so anytime you're buying those stuff off you know your resources guess what it's gonna drop down in price and cheaper and cheaper that's what's coming here so that's gonna be cool and the veil society quiz so we, we can ex be excited for them but now here is the real one. War pet gameplay changes, and this is the thing we've been waiting for. Changes uh, the way the war pet learns skills. You can now choose which war pet skills will be replaced. Finally, we apologize for any losses that our players may incur, and as a result of this change, we will compensate the players. Oh! And this is what we've been saying. Look, for myself, and you guys have been wondering, you know, I'm a content creator and I know they've done stuff like this in the past. That's why I'm not too scared to, you know, go a bit crazy. But they're going to compensate us. So if you've replaced any skill by learning a new skill or used the skill card and then discarded the result, any zero or one star skills you've used will be refunded for an equivalent amount of an exchange coin. So I'm going to get all my coins basically back for that, which is really good. And any of the two or three star skills that we've used will be returned to you. That's really good. So now, guess what, boys? You can imagine, I know you loved War Pets before, but we can actually do a really good War Pet series showing this off, going for a hunt at least, and make it a really good pet, right? So this is what we've been waiting for. This is the change everyone's been asking for. And finally, it's come. So they are listening to us, guys. They are listening to the community and the content creators, and they are putting their foot ahead, and they're going in the right direction. So I'm loving this. They've done a quick artifact improvement. It targets now 15% um, less instead of 25. So you're actually dealing more damage with Sauron's Blade now. A little buff to that. Um, even richer combat experience. This is buffs again. We've got a buff to Guan Win. So instead of over 60%, it's over 50, so which is really good. Uh, skill description improvements, improved skill descriptions and concepts of diffuse damage. So it's basically, it's going to explain better skills, better basically, like to do with that. Um, skills that deals diffuse damage includes the Frozen Star, Skogol's skill, Blood Soaked Battle and Linear skills, Flame of Vengeance, Awakening skill, uh, Burning Blood. So basically like any like the Scorch base, you know, weird like, I'm guessing diffused, as they say, base effects. 
And then artifacts that deal diffuse damage include Phoenix Eye, Greymaz Warhammer, Kingslayer, and all these are all obviously going to get fixed too, so you know I have to worry about that. Defensive structures, reduced the barricades durability and obstruction effects. I'm so glad they've done this. I'm actually happy to do that they've done this. So let me just read this. In order to improve the gaming um, experience, we removed the barricade feature in Season 2 Plus, but players in current Season 2 Plus will no longer be able to build barricades. All barricades oh, on the map will be removed and the cost will be refunded. Right, okay. Maybe they're not then. So this is changed. They've changed this then. So this is a bit of a lie. Instead of saying reduced, they should have just said removed, right? So that's fine. So they removed the barricades. We knew they were doing this. Um, but I thought they were changing it, but they're not. So right now, basically, they're going to remove all the barricades. If you've put any out, you're going to get all of that resource back, so don't worry about it. Um, it's just to basically change it. People don't like barricades. They don't like how brokenly strong the slow effect is, which is fair enough. It's fair enough. I think you could have personally, you know, reduced how strong those barricades were so it was easier to destroy or make an artifact that could potentially break them easier, you know, stuff like that you could do and find ways around it, but they can remove it, which, which is fine. Uh, the peacekeeping changes, the uh, increased difficulty of certain low-level darklings, which is cool. Uh, Multi-legion combat, add a feature that automatically arranges melee legions to the front and range legions to the rear. So this is going to be really cool. So we're going to actually see when we send them out, normally we should have the, the, the front line infantry in the front and then we have the, you know, the majors, the archers, all those guys at the back, which is amazing. Looks a little bit better and what you kind of expect, obviously, the, the formation to look like. And finally, the best feature they've added, and I can't wait, in order to improve your experience, Roots of War now includes a brand new Observe feature. If your alliance is registered for Roots of War, all non-combatant alliance members will be able to enter the battlefield to observe gameplay. Guess what? I can watch you! Yes, I can watch you guys. Now, finally, do your Roots of War. So if you really want me in your Roots of War, don't worry. I'm going to make an amazing Discord area so you can put all of your different times when you're doing your, you know, your alliance, what server, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I can hopefully join one. I mean, after you've watched them, join another one and join another one. And hopefully we can have a really good, maybe mini kind of eSport commentary scene on Roots of War, which is going to be really fun. So I'm so glad they've added the brand new observation feature. We've been asking and screaming for it and they have been listening. Then number five is all about your alliance, which is really cool. So alliance keep improvements. Legions defending alliance keeps are now classed as PvP legions, meaning that any relevant PvP skills can be now activated, which is really powerful instead of being in a stronghold. Alliance help improvements. Improve the alliance help notification system, which is really good. Basically, nice quality of life changes. You can now enter the alliance help screen by tapping or clicking the help icon on the alliance center, which is nice. You can also now jump to corresponding technologies, which is really good. And then the new alliance chat pa um, past message features. You can now see past messages after being removed from an alliance, even if you join a new alliance. So basically, if someone was talking trash about you and you wanted to make sure when you joined that alliance they weren't talking trash, guess what? You can go back up and check it out to make sure no one is. So you can see at least up to the last 20 past messages, which is really cool. And then other improvements in the game. Let's see. Because there's some improvements I want to see done, like the turrets, which they've mentioned here. But we're going to see how good they do. You can now preview turrets attack range before placing it, which is really good. Upgrading turret from level 5 to level 6 will cost now 1 warren instead. So now they're making you spend warrants on your turrets and on your pets. And if they're doing this, they must be a making it so you can get more warrants. They have to give you more warrants. There's no way I'm spending one of my two warrants per day, you know, to go from a level five to a level six turret. There's no way. There is no way on this God's earth I'm doing that. So until they give you more warrants and make warrant an actual currency that we can use a lot more often and not restrict it and let us capture pets and do stuff with it, then maybe we, get, we can start talking about upgrading to level 6. But until then, we're not going to do that, guys. 
So I hope you've been enjoying the patches so far with that. Um, the other alliance building improvements, though, you can now choose the original and new methods when choosing a, a location of alliance buildings. That's cool. You can choose new method buildings. Basically, it's just how you can place buildings. It, it, it's, it's fine. Merit display, though. You can now hide how many merits you have from other players until the August one reaches the merit calculation stage at the very end of the season. I don't know why you'd want to do that because a lot of players personally should be displaying their merits to showcase how well they've been doing in that season. It's a good way of getting recruited or migrating into another alliance, but hiding it is always sketch. So it is what it is. We'll soon see what, what they're going to do. UI improvements, nice display increase for chat windows, emojis, personal information, which is nice. And number five, new cross server viewing feature. Finally, another feature I've been asking for since day one, and I know Boss Nasty has, and I know a couple of us have, all been asking for this, cross-server viewing. So now, I should be able to go on my main account and look at your accounts. I don't need to make any scouts anymore unless I'm making a scout to obviously join your Roots of War experience in the future whenever that would occur, right? But I can watch all of your fighting now in that new viewing feature. So I can't wait to see that. This new feature unlocked uh, notifications as well, which is really cool. New quick commands, added seven quick commands for Behemoth Raids, which is really good, meaning you can imagine, you know, follow here. If dodge the charge is not a quick command, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. I'm just saying, guys, right? We need that as a quick command. Dodge the charge needs to be a quick command for Behemoth Raids. Let's just make a petition already, right? And then finally, they got community links, which is really nice. You can now visit the TikTok and Instagram, which is good because this is a step in the right direction because I have asked if we can do something like this for the content creators. So if they're able to do this for the TikTok and Instagram, they've figured out the technology to implement, you know, URL specials like this as buttons in the game. So hopefully they can do that with the YouTubers. You can hit the YouTube button, it'll take you to the, maybe their content creators and you can click on them and follow their, you know, videos or watch it in the game. Who knows, you know, maybe something really cool like that. And then PC improvements, and these are actually really good improvements that I, as a PC gamer, is loving. Dual logins, and we can now log into two different accounts at the same time and press start game on the launcher, which is really good. And then we can also more resolution options. We can now actually get a better resolution. I'm not stuck to this one, what I'm always looking at on screen, which is absolutely mwah, for the, the game. So I'm not gonna lie. Patch 1.021, I'll leave it up to you what you think, but I honestly think this is one of the best patches they've done. I actually think this is a really good good patch. Why? They have fixed everything that we've been asking for. They've given you the pet skill replacement, which is great. They've given us the spectate feature, which is great for Roots of War. They've given us the spectate feature across servers, which is amazing. They've even given us new events and finally holiday-based events that we can imagine in the future, like Easter, Thanksgiving, Chinese New Year's, you know, all of those amazing holidays everyone celebrates across the world. You know, we can all see this going in that right direction. And they've got on top of it really quickly, I must admit. So patch 1.021, that is it. That is everything that you're gonna need to know. I hope you've enjoyed the rundown with me, Mr. Sneaker. Nice quick one, nothing too crazy. And let me know your thoughts. You know, put a comment below, tell me what you think about patch 1.021. And until the next video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you then. Stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out.